Use ChatGPT to be far more persuasive. Grant applications in academia rely on you expressing yourself to the point where you move someone to make a decision to give you loads of money. And the only way you can do that is by using words on a page. And I think that's where Chat. GPT comes into its own because remember that people are looking at these applications and that people make decisions based on emotion first and then rationalize it later with facts and figures and data. So what we've got to do is create grant uh, writing, grant applications that actually have an emotional response. And the way we can do that is by using artificial intelligence to actually make our writing far more persuasive persuasive. Let's take a little look. Okay, so here I have an abstract from um, a successful grant application. But one thing I think we can do is look at this abstract and try to make it more persuasive just by asking the artificial intelligence. So here we are. We'll take this first uh, sentence, for example. Many children with mild to severe hearing loss are identified and received early intervention at very young ages. Okay, and then we've got the problem statement. Even with this early intervention, however, children who are hard of hearing experience challenges with communication due to... Uh, reduced access to ordered auditory signal. There we are. Okay, so what we're going to do is, remember, this is the first thing that a grant body is going to look at. So we need to make this as persuasive and as powerful as possible. And all we're going to do is go across here and say, please make this more persuasive. And then... Oh, it's pasted wrong, so let's get rid of those numbers. Okay, so what this really does is it's brilliant at emulating persuasive language. Now, I'm not saying that you need to take this exactly as it is and copy it across to your grant application, but what you can do is use this as a base for really understanding what persuasive text looks like. And I think it's not done a bad job. So. It's imperative that we prioritize early identification and inter intervention for children with mild to severe hearing loss. And so down here, I think, you know, if this is the first thing people read, this is the sort of emotional sort of um, uh, feelings we need to pr provoke in the grant reviewers. And so children who are hard of hearing often struggle with communication and face daily obstacles. Um, and by providing them with the resources and attention they need, we can give them the chance to live their full potential and lead fulfilling lives. The time to act is now to ensure that no child with hearing loss is left behind. Now that is far more persuasive, I think, than that initial uh, sentence that we put, a couple of sentences that we put in. So as you're reading this, what you've got to do is look at it and say, what's actually making me feel something? That feeling is what we want our grant reviewers to actually do feel as well. So why not take some of these and put them across into your own grant? So first thing, brilliant at persuasive language. And persuasive language in a grant really needs to be around the problem. And as you can see here, it's really sort of pushed the emotional aspects and the persuasive aspects of a problem. And then your solution. Ask it for a more persuasive version of your solution statement. And I reckon your grant is more likely to be funded. It's certainly got a much better chance and it's as easy as plugging it into this new AI tool. Poster presentations are another place where chat G PT, that's it, can really help you. The thing is, is that with poster presentations as a researcher, you want to cram as much information in as possible. And this is a perfect way to help you summarize what you actually want to say. So here is one of my old uh, poster presentations done in PowerPoint. Look at this beauty. Isn't it wonderful? It's got pictures and graphs and AFM images and SEM. Oh, just brilliant. But here we can see it's actually quite wordy. That's not what we want. We don't want it to be too wordy. So can we say that in less uh, words? So all I want to do is copy paste that entire introduction across to the chat and say, say in fewer words, and then copy and paste that in. And let's see what it comes up with. Okay, it's definitely reduced 
the amount of text. Let's see if it's any good. So Nano Composites offer a solution to ITO limitations such as cracking and cost in organic or electronics. Okay, a little bit clunky, but we can work with that. I think that's a great opening sentence. Um, ITO, so indium tin oxide, it's not sort of like done the abbreviation, but that's fine. We can do that ourselves. Is high cost and in uh, ITOs, high cost and inflexibility hinder cost saving manufacturing processes. Nanoscale controls crucial in producing continuous films and nanocomposites that can replace ITO and ITO accounts for up to 85% of the cost of organic photovoltaics making alternative transport, uh, transparent, conductive and flexible materials necessary. Now, a little bit clunky, not necessarily as smooth as I'd want it but you can see it's taken a lot of the information and made it um, much more dense and compact. We can play with this but I think it's a great way of actually making sure your posters aren't just full of loads and loads of text that no one's going to read anyway. You can also ask it to summarize things and put it in bullet points which can really help improve the attractiveness of your poster presentation. So if you're struggling to make something concise, boom, get it in this. Another place where I think this is an absolutely invaluable tool, once again, it comes down to where we need to be persuasive. And that is when you're applying for grad school, a PhD or masters, quite often they'll ask you to write a statement of purpose. Now here is one that I found online as an example. Um, and I think it's an okay example. And that's exactly what we need is something that's just simply okay. Now the first thing we can do is actually just ask it to rewrite this first paragraph more persuasively. And we're gonna do that in a different way. We can just say, hey, let's do something persuasive. But let's actually look at someone who I think is a really persuasive public speaker, and that is Barack Obama. Why not? So let's say, rewrite this in the style of Barack Obama. So here's the statement of purpose. Let's just pull up chat. And so uh, write this in the style of Barack Obama. And let's see what it comes up with. Now, All right, so it's finished, and I think this is where it's a little bit of fun. So we can see here it starts friends. It also starts folks as well sometimes with his speeches, but let me tell you about the doctoral program. Okay, so the first sentence, maybe not so great for an actual application, but let's have a look how it goes on. This program represents a chance to delve deeper into the world of higher education and to prepare myself to be a leader in the field. And I think that is a much better start than the first one where the doctoral program will provide me with an opportunity to learn more about higher education and prepare me to be a senior level college administrator. It's factual, but it's not persuasive. This first sentence, or the second sentence in, in this case, used as the first sentence in an application, boom. I think it's already got a much better hook. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and then it goes on, you know, you see this unique, this program is unique. Uh, okay, maybe not so much that one once again, but we can go on from, it will not only provide me with the tools I need to be a catalyst within the world of higher education, but it will also allow me to make an impact in my community. And as someone who's passionate about first generation African-American college students, ah, oh, this is actually reading incredibly well. So I would recommend that if you are doing a statement of purpose or you're asked to um, do something that needs to be persuasive for application uh, to a master's degree, a PhD, or just sort of like college in general, run the first few paragraphs through something like this and it will really boost that feeling that we need to give to the administration officers and people reading your application. I think this tool allows you to be creative because it does the generative stuff for you, but you can be creative and be like, hey, give me it in this style or more persuasive or let's have a, a nice summary of what I've done. That is another really important way of using this tool. And uh, yeah, let's talk about summaries. Now, sometimes you've written a paper like I have here, or you've come across a paper. This is one of mine from 2015. Look how many authors are on there. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, here is the um, abstract, and I haven't got time to read that. Or maybe I need to take this information and present it to a, um, a general audience. And for a general audience, we like to say that we're speaking to kind of like a well-educated 11 to 15-year-old. That's kind of where um, an audience likes to have their information placed. 
paste. It just makes it easy for them to digest the information. They don't have to work too hard. Remember, this is about making them feel comfortable and keeping them engaged. So keeping the information pretty succinct and at a higher level really does help. So let's take all of this information and let's say um, we want to, uh, yeah, just simplify it a little bit. You can do this with your work or you can do it with someone else's if you don't quite understand what they're on about. So um, explain uh, to a, let's say 14 year old this and then we'll paste that in and let's see what happens because as you can see that is actually quite a, uh, a complicated kind of uh, paper but it seems to have done a pretty good job. It likes to start with this uh, opening sentence, we won't worry about that, but it says here, researchers have found a way to make a special material that can be used. This material is made up of tiny wires made of silver and tubes made of carbon all mixed together. Okay, so here, silver and tubes, but yeah, carbon nanotubes, that's kind of good. Uh, once again, this isn't something I would copy and paste straight across, but it gives me an idea of where I should pitch my uh, presentation if I'm giving one. And so this makes it conduct electricity very well and it's also transparent so you can see through it. This material can be made in high volume process which is important for making a lot of it. Very good. Okay, another fantastic use of where we have to take something and sort of uh, mold it for a new audience. And I think that's what this uh, AI tool does really well. As a researcher, your power is in your words and your ability to adapt your words to the audience. And this makes it an absolute breeze. Now I think we are only just scratching the surface when it comes to using AI tools. But remember that as an academic, your words and your ability to to persuade someone and convince someone your ideas are the best really will determine your success in getting grants and getting um, papers accepted. And so making sure that you use this to um, persuade people, either by just saying, make this sentence, this paragraph more persuasive, or by writing it in the style of someone who is an expert persuader and public speaker. All of that can be done by using um, an AI tool like ChatGPT. And I think the future is very exciting. Remember, we're not getting rid of creativity here. We're just helping ourselves with that generative process. Now it can be done at the click of a button. And I really sort of like am afraid for grant reviewers because all of their grants are gonna be singing to them, singing to their emotions. And it's gonna be much harder to decide between grant applications in the near future. For the time being, use a tool like this to stand out. But I think maybe in the next couple of years, everyone will be doing this. So get going now. So there we have it. There's everything I think you need to know about the way that you can use ChatGPT the best in research. Let me know in the comments what you would add. And also remember that you can interact with me in a number of different ways. First of all, head over to sign up to my newsletter where you'll get uh, five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content only available for free. So go check it out. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my ebook Book, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide, the Insider Forum, the blog's growing out as well. Oh, it's all to help you. So go check it out and I'll see you in the next video.